We are good. We're good. Okay. So uh, this is the start of the September 1st uh, Facilities Committee meeting of the Yellow Springs School District. Um, and like I said, let's go around and just do a quick uh, introduction of everybody before we get started. And Leslie, you get to start. Hi, my name is Leslie Guerin. I'm the executive assistant to Dr. Guerin. Mike Slaughter, I'm president and I'm the facilities committee. Jerry Pappen, head of facilities committee. David Roach, facility committee. Roy Conrad, uh, ex main supervisor of the school district. Richard Zoff, facilities committee. Scott Fife, facilities committee. Brian Mayer, band and orchestra teacher. Chris Hamilton, facilities committee. Judith Hempling, uh, school board. Dorothy Bouquet, school board. Jack Hatter, middle school, high school principal. Uh, Mike Murdoch, Boots Engineering. And Mike Richley, Richley Architects. Kenetta Sanford, sixth grade teacher at Mills Lawn. Megan Winston, principal at Mills Lawn. Terry Holden, superintendent. Okay, and yeah, if people want to just introduce back here. I'm David Diamond, I'm a parent. Michelle Burns, parent. Diane Chickester, Village uh, Room. Carla Morbeth, parent. Jessica Morbeth, parent and employee. Okay. Uh, you're turning up the here. Oh, sorry, Naomi Bongiorno, parent, alumna, Holly Smith Conway, community member. Uh, Gary Sarabsky, villager. Abigail Cobb, I was on the 2019 School Facilities Task Force. I'm also a grandparent. Uh, Lauren Shells, parent, villager. Katie Mays, parent. David Miller, parent. Eric Bradford, uh, Okay, welcome. Everybody, um, we're we're going to have a very meaty uh, meeting tonight. Uh, so I'm going to try to uh, chair it in a way that everybody, if they have anything they want to ask questions or participate, I'm going to try to keep moving things around. But um, so we're first going to hear from Mike Bruschley, our architect, um, with uh, questions after that, then uh, Moats, and I know superintendents want to speak first, so I don't mean to miss you there, Terry. And then uh, uh, Mike Murdoch from Moats uh, Engineering, who's our maintenance plan advisor. Uh, and then there's a couple other items we need to talk about, so we need to leave a little room at the end. Uh, well, Moats, uh, well, Michael's going to be discussing a few different things. We're also going to talk about our calendar um, and uh, sort of, and then the coming items on the agendas uh, to keep the to keep the uh, work of the committee moving forward. Um, and so, but the superintendent's going to start things off. Thank you. And, and I'm just going to stand quickly so I can see everyone. As uh, thank you for being here. We we have some very important work to do. Um, and so the part I want to talk specifically about is the, the floor plans that you're going to see from my friendship. And so he met with myself and Megan and Jack um, several times to go over things. We did walkthroughs through the building to see, hey, what's working for us and what's not working um, and what could be um, uh, I'm going to say slightly fixed or what we need a full renovation. And so that's what you're going to see. For Mills Lawn, and I want to I want to make this known to the public, you're going to see two plans. One's going to say K6, one's going to say 3K5. I've mentioned that at the board meetings, but there's been no community discussion about that. I want everyone to know that. However, when we do planning like this, it's important for us to anticipate any possibility that might come down the road. So as he'll explain, it's, a, it's really easy. I mean, they're very similar. So I don't want folks to get alarmed when you see that. That's deliberate. We did that deliberately. Does not mean that's the direction we're going. The same for 712. It says 712. But Mike will explain, and then Jack can weigh in because he and, and his assistant and myself, we talked about how would it change a plan if sixth grade came up or if sixth grade didn't. So I just want to preface his discussion with that so you're not asking him all those questions about why. Well, there pre K on there. So that's it. So thank you. Thank you. So, Mike, 
I phone a friend on the screencasting. <laughs> so are you starting with Mills Lawn? Yes. Okay. So uh, just to um, maybe put this into a uh, context, when we talked about creating a permanent improvement plan in order to meet the, the educational needs of the district, we were talking about maintenance, renovation, deep renovation, and new construction, um, and that that is that that the plan would include all of that. Some uh, and so this is actually going to be the deep renovation and new construction. We're actually kind of starting there uh, with Mike's presentation. So, so for the public, it's attached as a document uh, in the board agenda um, online. Online, if you want to look that way, and it's all same place where you will find our board meetings. So I want to first talk about the process to where, how we got to where we are today. So I recommended a work session format with the building principals. So on August 1st, I had uh, a Mills Lawn meeting and I met with uh, Megan and Terry. Uh, and I came to that meeting without options or designs, but simply just to listen and learn and walk. Um, see the building through her eyes. We went space by space. She, she described to me the issues she was having in her building. So then, of course, I'm applying my own filter. I'm like, okay, hearing what you're saying, does it feel based on my experience that these are kind of true and normal comments um, and absorbing that? And I'm also, I'm also applying my experience and I'm noting things I'm not seeing that I probably should be seeing. So it's kind of a mixture of, of those two. Uh, and then in the afternoon, I went with Jack uh, and Joy and the athletic director. We did the same thing, just clean, uh, clean sheet of paper. What's happening? What's your experiences? What are you hearing from your teachers? And, and walk the building space by space, listen to them. And again, saw things that he didn't necessarily say, but um, I felt to be true or, or things that I was noticing. Uh, so that was work session number one. Then we came back for work session number two. That was on the 22nd at Mills Lawn and the 23rd at the middle school and high school. And at that session, I presented um, the work or uh, an earlier generation of the work you're going to see today, which was an existing floor plan that's up to date, room designations listed, how each space is being used. Um, there's been work done in your, all your buildings this summer. Walls have been added, rooms have been created, people have been shuffled. The drawings reflect that. Uh, and the second was a essentially an issues um, or recommendations noted drawing that you're going to see. Where we say, okay, what are the problems we're trying to solve and where are they uh, around your building? Uh, and then third was a draft master plan, just a first. A first attempt to say, okay, does this solve the majority of the problems that we've identified and talked about together? And then I took their input and I revised the drawings um, a bit and then presented it to the committee. So my recommendation was before the committee and the, the board saw the plans, I wanted to make sure that they were vetted by the professional, you know, the folks who were in these buildings uh, 
all the time. So that, that's kind of uh, the background. Uh, so starting up on here for Mills Lawn, uh, this is a uh, the existing conditions floor plan. Um, if you can see, kind of at a high level, I've got some white larger text. This is a K-5 building. So we have a pair of K classrooms, a pair of ones, a pair of twos, and then a third one. So what you'll see in this building is the need to have flexible classroom spaces because Megan's managing bubbles that are coming through. And it, they don't always, the kids don't come at you and meet 25 student pairs. Yes, they do. <laughs> so, so the right, the whole right side of the building is, is what I would refer to as the K3 primary wing. And the reason you see, in this case, three ones and not two, 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 is because one happens to be the bubble this year. The wave, okay. yeah. The wave, we call it the, the wave. The wave, yeah. Okay, the wave as well. <laughs> then what you have is you have kind of uh, shared services, gym, kitchen. And then on the left side of the building is your four six wing. Uh, you've got two fours, you have three fives, again, because of the wave, a pair of sixes, and then you've got your specials, your art and music here. And then while the text is sh showing it, uh, in the modular is your band room and a storage room. So you also have another special uh, out in the back. And just for clarity, those, are, those should be switched. I'm in the first room. Excellent. Thank you. I'll switch that. Okay, so that's the lay of the land. Uh, this wall was added this summer, and a, and a clinic and counselor's office was, was created, so that's all updated. Um, secondly, and, and I've got a, a limited time, so I'm going to move pretty quickly, was the issues, recommendations, notes. Again, this was a, an attempt to identify items in general, where they're occurring on the plan, that are current constraints uh, and issues. And let's start with probably the most important piece to solve in all of this, which is um, security. So this, this building uh, lacks a secure vestibule. And so the note is look for an opportunity to create a secure uh, vestibule at the school. The office area, and these are some of the things I saw, was uh, a general dispersion of office functions throughout the building, not because people are doing anything wrong, but you've got an EMIS office you're creating, and you've got special ed, and it's, it's psych, and, and it's just been kind of put them where you can find them. So I, I have a general note saying, look for opportunities to consolidate and right-size dispersed administrative functions because you've got these folks all over the place. And in terms of running a school, um, it's always best if your team uh, can be together. Um, as we, uh, there's same thing with teacher workrooms. Um, you've got teacher workrooms kind of split all over the place and just look for ways to improve, consolidate uh, that teacher workroom experience. The K3 wing on a general note, would be to add, uh, at a minimum, two small group rooms, and then also look for opportunities to open up additional space. I'll kind of uh, editorialize, the K3 wing is a space desert, right? You come down this corridor, and it's just a corridor to the end. And so the other side has the media center as kind of a relief or interaction space. The K3 wing doesn't. So the idea here is to try to find or look for opportunities to open up uh, some space. I've got notes here that say right size. Um, you have spaces that are too big for your needed use. Uh, for example, in your reading center and your intervention specialist room, those are occupying what used to be a regular classroom size, but they're not serving a full classroom load of students. So there's opportunities in some cases, and these two in particular, to maybe downsize uh, current functions. I've got a star denoting a pinch point, and this is this is a, a note that basically says a full renovation of the whole children's restroom experience on this half of the building is warranted. On the other half, there are new restrooms that are in pretty good shape, but on, on this half, these restrooms are poor, and the, the way the sinks are out in the corridor, you essentially create a situation where you've got like a two to three foot wide corridor 
that creates kind of pinch point uh, in that entire array. Um, I also have a little a little other symbol on here. This building is um, inundated with exterior doors. These are essentially security penetrations. These are examples here in the restrooms where I think it the original building design thought this would be restrooms that would serve the athletic fields and that they may come in from the fields and, and walk through these doors. And that's just not how it's used. So everywhere where I show that symbol, it's, it's a recommendation to look for opportunities to reduce uh, the number of exterior doors. Uh, recommendation on the modular is to demolish. Uh, Emus uh, is in what used to be a green room. Emus is your emergency. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. Emus is our, our data, data, data functions data entry. for the district. We don't have room. So in the board office, we just wait. Where is it at? Oh, right here. Uh, so it's not it's here. Out. Yep, but that's an example of uh, an office was created. However, now that you don't have your green room and you walk on the stage, so there's probably other reasons, but the stage is full of stuff because it was stored in a room that's now an office. Um, what is a green room? A green room is a kind of a pre stage, pre function. Let's say you had an artist who was going to perform. Gotcha. They may okay. go to the green room and, and okay. prep it. And, and they have this, uh, and I, my mouse isn't showing up. You have the ability to go from that room to the door up the stairs on the stage kind of yeah. without being in front of the audience. Uh, kitchen area, um, you have an undersized kitchen area, probably about half. And then you have an additional pinch point that's showing up as that star where yeah. there is no ser there is no serving area. There's just the hallway. The serving area happens uh, in the hallway. Uh, and then on this wing, um, this is just a personal comment from my experience in your art room. Uh, there's no there's no dedicated art storage room, so the art teacher's room is the art storage room. So the whole western wall is storage, um, and there's really lit, there you've got some borrowed light from the clear story, but really no exterior windows. So just my recommendation was that might be a good room to find a new home for, based on on some of those conditions. Uh, some more notes on exterior doors. Uh, the two stars up on the left are restrooms that are currently not used. Uh, lower level storage with a flooding history. Uh, and then uh, there's a computer lab that, a, a short wall between the computer lab and the library. And the idea was maybe that wall and the computer lab can be removed and the whole area kind of re-envisioned. That's a nicer uh, media center. And then look for opportunity to add a small group room uh, uh, or two on the four six point. So that's a real quick recommendations, and I'm sure I don't want to stop for questions, but I want to keep keep rolling. Okay. So this is a first draft, a first iteration. So this is not the end product. This isn't what we're recommending, or necessarily what you're going to do. But it's just the thought was: could we create a vision that keeps that keeps mills long and solves essentially all the items we just identified. Could we create a vision for that? And that's what this is uh, attempting to do. There are three colors on this plan. The gray is uh, what I'm calling a targeted systems improvements. Uh, this is, the majority of this is the 2002 edition. And if you walk through both this building and high school, and you walk through the 2002 edition, I think you'll generally find that those spaces are in much better shape. So if there's any portion of the plan that lends itself to kind of strategic targeted renovation, it would be uh, the 2002 edition. The blue area is uh, uh, an initial recommendation of what I'm calling deep renovation. Deep renovation would be uh, all systems and all finishes. So you would walk through that when it's done and you would have essentially what feels like a new school, um, new HVAC, new lighting, uh, paint the walls, new flooring, new furniture. So we would feel like uh, all, all new systems and finishes in the room. And the yellow represents uh, recommended building additions. So that would be uh, reconstruction. I'm going to start with um, just a real quick primer on what a secure vestibule is. This is a really important uh, concept, and I don't want to assume we all kind of know what, what this is. This is a, a case study of a secure vestibule of a, a different school we designed. 
and the the exterior door is right here. And in the in the more and this is the office area uh, is in the red. In the morning, both the exterior door and the interior door of that secure vestibule are, are unlocked. These are staffed, so you have staff outside, you might have principal outside, and the kids are just uh, flowing in uh, in that situation. When school starts, for certain, these interior doors are locked, and this is what we what we're calling the secure vestibule. Um, and then the exterior doors can either be locked or unlocked, depending on what kind of level of security you want. But the reason I bring this up is it's important to realize that there are other spaces that are important for secure vestibules to work. And that's essentially the reception and the secretarial area, the way to uh, uh, detect, deny, and delay them. So a secure vestibule is about denying and delaying entry. Right? You're not going to stop necessarily someone from coming through. But if you can significantly slow them down with the school's partnership with uh, Yale Springs Safety Department, if you could just create some more time, that help can be on the way. That, that's what we're looking to do. So in, in the situation during school, uh, you would be you would have a couple options here. And I'll show you a, a, a picture of that if I can slide over. So this is inside that secure vestibule. In this example, there's multiple levels of engagement. Uh, there is a transaction window, so if you wanted to do quick face-to-face -face or passing a paper, you could do that, or the door itself. So this would be the door you would be buzzed into. As you can see, there are, there are design elements and line of sight elements. So the secretary has, just by nature of where she's sitting, line of sight of who's in the door. So you're not necessarily relying on the camera. The camera's great, but you've got a clear uh, line of sight. So that's, that's kind of how that uh, looks and then once you're inside, um, this is the door from the secure vestibule right here. Then you're greeted, and there's important functions that happen in this secretarial reception area. You're identified. You, with the system you're buying, you give them your ID. That takes some time, and you're scanned, and then you're given a pass. So we create and design the space for that to happen. So there's some chairs. So people can sit and wait. And then it's only after uh, all that happens that then they could proceed through this door here and then they're into the school. Okay, so I just wanted to explain that that it's when we're talking about a secure vestibule, for the secure vestibule to work, you need more than just the secure vestibule. You need some of these supporting uh, functions to, to support. So with that, let's dive into that uh, recommendation. So with Mills Lawn, the proposal is we would come in and we would create that secure vestibule internally in existing space by adding uh, the glass uh, doors in the wall. And then this is that, that door into the reception area, and then you have the secretarial area, and then once they're badge identified, then they would be let through this door and, and then into the school. The way I did that is I greatly expanded the footprint and the size of your current reception and secretary area. Because there is, does anyone to take the tour? Yeah. There's no space for any of that to happen in your, in your current. And the way I did that was I basically expanded and consolidated the office area into this entire block by removing one of the classrooms uh, that was in the way. So we've created a kind of a new administrative area with a principal's office, a tenant office for speech and sight, admin restroom, a clinic, with a restroom and a clinic that's also directly accessible from the, the office area, which is great for folks at the front desk to be able to kind of control and monitor and, and, and go back and forth. Uh, some storage and support, copier, uh, the counselor is here adjacent. Sometimes it's nice to have the counselor not immediately off the office area so kids don't feel like they're getting in trouble, right, for seeing the counselor, but it's still nice to have them adjacent. And special ed and EMIS, I put over here into your existing space. Uh, in this option, this is the, the K6 option. K stays where they are, but the restrooms get uh, largely expanded into ADA compliant restrooms. And then the ability to keep the playground access through um, recommending a fence around the playground. And that's just another deterrent 
method. People see a fence around there, you know, it, it just helps. And so now this would be no longer a primary single entry point, but it would essentially be a playground, secure playground access point for the source. Another recommendation is, is I feel like that's a pinch point. Might there be an opportunity just to do a little bit of relief into the lobby of the school? Know, maybe create an art gallery or just some type of branded feel out here as opposed to kind of walking into a, a, a tight uh, corner. Uh, your second um, kindergarten room, a pair of firsts, adding a teacher restroom, and a full gut and reno of your boys and girls restroom that takes the exterior doors and replaces them and puts the sinks inboard off the corridor. Uh, with on it, you know, the teachers can see their kids at the sinks, but they're not pitching that. that uh, reading center, uh, intervention specialist, and as, uh, based on the classroom counts, in this option, been able to essentially delete a wall and open up an existing classroom to create an open, extended learning space that might have access to the outside to a, a secure kind of outdoor space. So that was a, a gesture to try to create. Uh, a, just a little bit of space or relief for students in the OK2 way. Then we have a pair of twos, and then the reading room and the intervention specialist uh, are right off the extended learning area. We have one small group room there, and then a pair of small group rooms here. As we move over, we hit our, uh, the FLEX. FLEX stands for FLEX Classroom. So anything on that K, uh, K2 wing that needs to grow, that's the relief valve. Uh, in the middle, I've added a teacher workroom. Uh, when you kind of look at the campus wide, that's the center. So a new teacher workroom that would take all the uh, individual ones and, and combine them to one directly opposite uh, the uh, office area. And then here, creating a specials wing. So two music rooms and an art room through the addition, the art room having northern uh, and eastern glass exposure, dedicated art storage room and a kiln room, and then two nice size music classrooms. I will kind of editorialize this and say it's unusual for an elementary school of 350 students to have two uh, music rooms, but that's part of your policy, apparently, to have all fifth and sixth graders taking band. Um, but that's this is the unique Yellow Springs uh, thing. Uh, so, so that's this. There would be some site work required to modify bus turnaround, and then you can do bus loading and unloading from this corridor, and that corridor lines up directly with uh, this existing interior corridor. On the kitchen side, uh, the thought was to do a an addition to house your kitchen, and then we take your existing kitchen and push it out into the new kitchen and create an open serving area for the students. And then through the utilization of things like coiling doors and whatnot, be able to open up these cross corridor pathways the students come through into a into a serving area. And then we we aid the flow across into the student dining room uh, to help that uh, flow and, and feel much better. Uh, over on, on this side, I pulled the art room out and proposing the art room in the addition. I've also pulled your music room out here and are proposing that in addition. That allows us to have two threes, two fours, two fives, two sixes, a flex, and then your um, this is your intervention specialist self-contained with the restroom. And the blue here uh, is just a recommendation that that's an opportunity to do some deep renovation on that wing. So the three sixes feel like you know, they've got a little bit something uh, in it too. Also allows us to merge the computer lab with the library uh, and make improvements in that respect. A uh, quick area summary for the math folks. Uh, current existing square footage is 47. With the modulars, you're at 49. Uh, the two additions, uh, one is 1,000, one's 5,480. So a total of 55,000, which means a 5,990 square foot increase, which is a, approximately it's a 12.2% increase. So this master plan with this vision adds 12.2% additional square footage than you have today. And that is essentially to buy and fix some of these problems.
Um, certainly, we don't have time for questions because we had no. No, you time. know what? I'm kind of reconsidering. Can we keep going? <laughs> this, um, okay. yeah, you should just keep going. I mean, my feeling is, let me just ask the group. I mean, you've got a lot of material here. There's no way you're gonna. It's gonna take an hour for you to do the presentation. Um, either we're gonna have to go past nine, and if people don't want to do that, I'm almost wondering if we should just do presentations with a little bit of questions at the end, maybe, uh, as a way to. Um, but I don't know how do people feel about going past nine o'clock. No, Terry. <laughs> It's rough. Okay, so Bye. why don't why don't we? I mean, we'll have lots. Then we'll have time to digest, and then I mean, the committee's going to have to think about whether it needs another meeting this month uh, and to I actually. Maybe um, if folks have questions, these presentations are going to happen in next week's board meeting. I just want to make sure people are they're happening at the beginning. Is that have correct? an opportunity to ask questions because I think that's really important. No, that's fine. But I'm saying, is it going to be at six o'clock? Yes, when the meeting starts, and, and, and you're going to have earlier. My start. Six o'clock. Okay. okay. So people should mark that. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Just keep going. I think. Okay. Yeah. Go to the high school. That's just yeah. my opinion. I don't know what. Yeah, I think. So option B, its cousin is a pre-K to five. As Terry mentioned, these are these are very very similar, and I'll just point out the differences. Uh, the difference is, is that to provide a proper size kindergarten room, we need about 1,080 square feet. So in this option, I backfill pre-K where K is today and then create two new Ks. These dashed lines represent walls that would have to be removed. I was able to do it with only taking down three walls. Um, the other difference is each kindergarten room should I mean kind of best practice is to have its own individual ADA compliant restroom right off of it. So each kindergarten, uh, so we add a single restroom here for this kindergarten room, and we add a single restroom here for this kindergarten room. And that's pretty much the difference. Um, the other difference is this then becomes a pre K one wing, with, uh, it's hard to say, with flex. And then this one becomes a two five way with flex. You move the six to the high school. And the six goes to the high school. And the, the theory here is is uh, Terry and her team are experts on the educational issues. But if there's ever going to be a time to consider this, this would be a great time because it would impact sizes and shapes and, and what you might do. Okay, next building. Um, High school, you have the existing floor plans. And I will dive into, dive into the office uh, Same note here about creating a secure vestibule. This one is much harder. Um, the other problem here with deterring folks from this building is is there's really no identifiable front door at all in this building. And that's a safety kind of deterrent issue as well. So, so trying to solve that, um, uh, there is no teacher workroom, and there needs to be to support the teachers. Um, this was kind of a big one. You have a French classroom in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm speaking very plainly. You've got a you've got this problem with serving and all this, and you've got a French classroom that's causing it not to call. It's um, on Brent. But we sorry. It's on Brent with the, friends. I'll the say French. Yes. <laughs> uh, and other classrooms as well. We're limited. The problem French, is the yeah. French. Yeah. It used to be the three French group. Yeah. <laughs> you have uh, restrooms that are uh, understocked, they're just not big enough, and you have a custodial storage room that I think could help solve our problem. Um, we have an open stair that uh, surely could use some safety improvements, open treads, open to the walls. Uh, this was an idea from, um, from your team about the idea of uh, maybe adding some operable walls to let the library and the cafeteria kind of speak to one another and flex and flow. Uh, the Kiva is creating a problem because the student dining room is too small. Now I know you eat there, 
but that was a room that was added that might want to be removed. All right, so we move over here. There's a question about the band room. There are steps down. There are ADA issues. So no. Uh, an opportunity for theatrical improvements uh, to this gym. There's no acoustical treatment. There are no multi-level lighting abilities. There's no even like modest lighting bar for any kind of theatrical performances. So I think you've got the space to do it, but that could use some attention. This is a, an unsolvable. I just want to bring this to the committee's attention. You have a 50 by 84 foot high school court, which is regulation size, but the, rec uh, the recommendations are three foot minimum end line to end wall, uh, 10 foot preferred. You've got about two foot nine, and you have it right here, and you have it right there. Now, you've got pads the whole way across on both sides. Um, Short of building a new gym or making your court shorter, you know this. These are these are some problems that are maybe not be solvable uh, through a uh, A note here about consolidating uh, dispersed admin spaces. You've got an admin space in here. Uh, you've got what's the feeling is a fairly underutilized uh, locker room, restroom area. This corridor also feels very, very underutilized today because you have that corridor and you have a corridor in the middle school. So it just feels like it's not doing uh, too much. Uh, the question about what to do with the shoebox. Uh, we have some additional administrative space over here that's again dispersed. It'd be nice to consolidate. And then as we move up the stairs, uh, same comment about the open state uh, stair safety improvements all the way up both stairs, both sides, and then looking to add restrooms on floors two and three, whether that's girls on one floor, boys on the other, or maybe a little mix. Um, the feeling is that it's it's just not a great situation for students on the third floor to have to come all the way down to the undersized restrooms on the first floor and then back up. And they're existing, aren't they? Uh, what you're talking about, the plumbing is there. There's some plumbing, I think it's on the other side of the wall, but you could get to it. Yeah. You could get to it. Okay. Uh, same thing, um, first draft up of an improvements plan. And let's jump right into the front door. So it, in this one, we solved the secure vestibule, identifiable vestibule dilemma through an addition. What we do is we create a portion of your administrative team through new construction out here where we're able to add the secure vestibule reception area secretary and be able to control all of that before students are into the building. Uh, for starters, we have high school, middle school principal, AD, admin restroom, conference room, some admin storage. And then they are supported by additional office area across the hall, which is where your current office area is today. So turning your current office area into a guidance suite with middle school and high school guidance with a guidance storage and guidance conference, uh, creating itinerant offices. So this would be like speech, psych, PTOT, where you have those small offices today where your um, AD is and your uh, assistant principal. Um, clinic, clinic restroom, a, uh, what do we call it? Gender, Gender neutral. neutral, thank you, right here. Off the hallway, uh, teacher workroom, custodial storage, and right uh, where that was expanded is where your current choir room is today. So in this proposal, it's to create two new music rooms. One is a, a nice large choir slash theatrical rehearsal room, and the second one is to create a band room and to demolish the band room. Uh, between the two would be storage support music libraries, offices, and then potentially some additional uh, restrooms here as well. Now those would be 18-foot um, ceilings, high volume, acoustically treated, kind of designed for, uh, for that music environment. And if we want to, we haven't talked about storm shelters, but you have the option to harden uh, a portion of this building if that would be the desire, whether we go to full, full tilt storm shelter or whether we do Supplemental hardening uh, for the 
Um, the next kind of big move, and this is for everyone to chew on this, is to, since we're creating a long-term vision, is to go ahead and replace the shoebox with new construction. And the way I did that as efficiently and economically as possible is I demolished it and the courtyard today uh, I would characterize as underutilized and not not uh, not too loved. So we take an addition and push it to where that corridor or that courtyard is today and we take advantage of that underutilized corridor for free. And now the addition is only those classroom spaces and we're, we're uh, reusing that. So that's, that's a big move. And the other big move we did is we flipped the school. Um, in this proposal, junior high grades either six to eight or seven to eight are in the tower, and the high school is all at grade. So the vision is, or the kind of the politics of this would be, we're doing a new high school addition uh, that uh, consists of high school classrooms and performing art spaces. So all the high schools on the ground floor the science labs that middle school currently uses are really nice. I think they might need to have gas added to them. Um, that's all part of the 2002 edition. And then your kind of capstone high school experience can all be on the ground floor there. Uh, and then um, middle school like the tower. So all these uh, rooms have been reorganized and, and relisted uh, as, as high school. So the first in the edition is a special ed self-contained with its own uh, ADA restroom and laundry. And then as we march down the way, we have two high school uh, math classrooms with a uh, operable wall for the ability to open that up and have them both in, in one larger room, a pair of small group rooms, high school social studies, high school uh, English language arts with a movable wall and two small group rooms. Uh, you've got your student advocate, so high school social studies, high school English language arts. And this is all existing with the movable wall, which gives them a lot of flexibility. High school science lab, high school career tech. That would be another high school science lab. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I missed that. High school science lab. And then over here, we have the engineering lab. Uh, and then here, this is just a first proposal to create some restrooms. The, the, Problem with these restrooms are they are uh, remote, removed, distant, um, and just to give maybe some faculty restrooms and maybe some kids restrooms with a face to that high school directly felt like you would solve uh, some building control problems. Uh, the pair of art rooms are here, and this stays for now as a, a Spanish classroom. And then over here, would be to remove the French classroom and create a serving area where the French classroom is today. So this would all be uh, renovated and expanded with equipment into a serving area that would, and I didn't draw it, but would be directly through this line. And then the key, moving the Kiva now creates the kind of space you need in there uh, to deal with some of your, uh, particularly if you're bringing a whole other room by the way. Uh, the library, maybe some operable walls in between, and then expanding the girls' restroom and the boys' restroom in place by expanding that into where that custodian is. And then potentially uh, having the opportunity to create maybe some outdoor space uh, here in the park. Um, I did look, just to editorialize a bit, uh, look at options to save the shoebox uh, for storage or some other use. And surely I could come up with an option if the committee uh, wants to direct me to do that. But my my opinion is, is the shoebox is in the right place. So like if, if you kept it and put an addition anywhere else around this building, you would be building corridors to it, circulation to it, and the ability to, to replace it and push it right up against the corridor we have today is a really efficient way to kind of solve that problem uh, once and for all. So that that's, that's you know, I maybe stretch, stretch a little high for the initial recommendation, but that, that's a thought, uh, is to maybe just consider replacing it uh, for this project. And then as we move, move up the tower, blue um, just designates deeper renovation. The tower could really use 
finishes, flooring, maybe some reconstruction, uh, creating the restrooms in it. So the thought was that could use some help, whereas the 2002 edition, which is all back here, uh, is in pretty good shape. I'm done. Okay. So I want to give um, Megan a chance to and the superintendent and uh, Jack, I was uh, just to, in terms of how this process has gone, your thoughts. Can I uh, interrupt just for one second? Yeah. Uh, data dump here. Yep. Existing building is 73,000 square feet. The shoebox is 7,500. The van room demo is 26. Uh, the academic edition is 6,135. The office music edition is 8,700. So our total is 77,687, which when we're said and done, it represents a 4,434 square foot increase or a 6% net increase from what we have today. Okay. Megan or Terry, whoever wants to start. I'm gonna to defer to my principles. Okay, cool. So I think um, the first thing I would like to say is just the day-to-day -day operation in a school building can be um, difficult for many different reasons. That could be a um, number of students on any given day, different classes moving from specials to back to class, different classrooms moving to um, restroom time, this class going to lunch, this class going to recess. There's a lot of movement in an elementary school building and maybe even more um, in a high school. But in elementary school, they are all moving typically at the same time. Um, so just keep that in your mind as you are looking at some of these um, areas where it gets congested in the hallways. Um, that is ultimately taking time away from students in the classroom learning with their teacher. Um, so I think that's kind of number one. I think the main point that I would like to make um, based on, on these drawings is if we are a district that values PBL, we are a district that values volunteers coming in and working with students. We're a district that values small group work so we can do some targeted intervention. We are a district that, that values the arts, the music, the art, the band, orchestra. And we're a district um, that values belonging and students feeling you know, that sense of belonging when they walk in the doors. And I'm sure we all value security. And I think everything um, that, that Mike showed you today speaks to the values that this village and the school district have. That goes with you know, the new music rooms, making sure that we have two music rooms so we can continue to offer band, orchestra, um, and choir to students, um, having the secure vestibule, keeping the students safe, um, making the staff comfortable as well, and not having to um, stoop so low going to the restroom and the staff um, restrooms like we are going in kindergarten restrooms. There's just a lot of different factors and I think, uh, again, it's really think about the values that the village has and the school district has and uh, and think about that as you look at, at, at these drawings. Thank you. Jack? Uh, I mean, I think Megan said most of it. Um, I agree, you know, from our building, um, the, the thought of flipping our high school and middle school um, is intriguing. Um, one thing we're very intentional about is trying to um, provide kind of an a early or um, I guess intentional transition into middle school and into high school and I actually think moving the middle school to the tower allows us to do that better um, and and like you said um, the art space music space uh, will still be there um, we are we are um, sorely lacking a consistent theater option in this community so um, right now, our only theater space in our building is a classroom that's been converted with um, walls that were painted black. And for a, a community that values the arts, it's not sufficient. So the thought of us really trying to capture that in this plan, I think is important. 
Um, the functionality of our building, um, this addresses uh, the restroom challenges. So we had kids who literally had a bell change, had to go all the way across the building because there were only four stalls serving the entire tower. Um, so, so just the idea that we're addressing the functionality. And then, you know, a big piece that I've continually brought up here is um, teacher, our teachers are important pieces of this, um, this whole plan. And education is in the midst of a crisis right now. So the idea that our facilities can also serve our staff, I think is very important. So just the thought of adding staff restrooms to that back hallway, when you think about what that does for a teacher who needs to use the restroom in that four minute transition as they are also trying to monitor the hallway and they're trying to help a student with a question at the end of class and all these different things. There, there are just subtle things um, that I think we've addressed in these plans that um, support the whole team. Jared. No, I think um, you know, I think certainly at, at first cut, it's, um, you know, it, it's not a new building, but if we are, were able to get this done, this would completely change the face of both buildings in our district. I, I think in very positive ways. Um, so I, I, I think we had a really good experience working, working with Mike. So I, I would just echo what the person said. Do you want to talk a little bit about that educational uh, push towards moving sixth grade, potentially, possibly. Do you want to explain yeah, I, I, that well, to people? I think developmentally, that's where they, they really need to be at the secondary level. And so for my seat, and then you had to shift your head, yes. And, and, <laughs> you know, even something like curriculum, I can't buy, I, it comes in, K-5, 6-8. So we just purchased a, a pretty cool science critique, 6-8. So when we had to do training, we had to send the sixth grade teachers up so they could get their materials and training and then come back down. It's just, I think even from something like that, coming out of that way, but they might want to speak to, to developmentally about why that would be appropriate. Now, let's say that happens. Then the next question is, what about pre-K? I know um, Dorothy has mentioned, you know, why does the district not, not offer pre-K? Um, there are some districts that do it. I think uh, there are tons of advantages to it. it, it there are some challenges um, in compliance and, and, you know, the type of staff you need. But again, if, if, if that would beg the question, if the sixth grade goes up and we have the room, how do we serve not only our families, our district families, but how do we serve the community by offering um, a high quality preschool in, in district? So just some things to think about. The only other thing I want to add is for me, the second part of this is hearing the systems piece because um, what? the systems piece to oh, this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this time of year, we have classrooms that are still brutal from a from an HVAC standpoint, from a moisture standpoint. So, I mean, that's the, the second piece as far as student comfort and teacher comfort um, that, that I'm interested in. And I don't know if you want questions at the very end. I saw some you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking. I have this a is, question. I'm kind of thinking we should just stay on these drawings. We've just taken in a lot of information. People are going to have questions and comments. And I almost feel like uh, modes should hold. Uh, and we may have time for a little bit at the end, but I just think it doesn't make sense to not get some input and questions answered at this time when it's fresh in our minds. And it, it's such an interesting uh, presentation. I think everybody's probably pretty interested in what this is, what is, uh, is being proposed. So. Um, I'd like to start with the committee. Any uh, initial comments or questions, uh, and then we can hear from other folks as well. I do have a question. Yeah. About uh, uh, turning down the shoe box. Um, yeah. Is is that because you need a certain square footage for the classrooms that you're adding? Because it looks like just based on the drawing that there's like 
10 feet that bumps into where the shoebox is currently. But if you shorten that up and just gave the classroom the rest of the space, is that not enough to, because it just seems to me like it's a shame to lose 7,000 square feet of still usable space. And what are you proposing to be used for? Well, you could do a lot of stuff with it. You could do tons, of, you never have enough storage. Uh, storage space, maybe a uh, small group. Uh, so I would, I would, while Mike's thinking of an answer, I would just say, I wish we would have held our meeting in the shoebox tonight. <laughs> because it is, so, so for example, when we were going to meet at the high school to discuss this, we were going to meet at the, in the library, and it was occupied, so we went to Jamie Adolph's room in the shoebox, and literally, as soon as I walked in, it was like somebody punched me in the face. Not only the heat, but you, you could smell it. And, and Mike said, well, this is better than it was the first time I came here to look around. So I think, I get what you're saying, Craig, but I think it is just... It seems like wow, it's a nice big space, but when you actually are in it, it is just awful. And, and to store things, any type of paper thing, we cannot store in there simply because of the moisture and the humidity. And no electronics, right? Uh -huh. No. So I remember the cop the copier issue is that the paper would warp in it and it would stop. So no electronics could go in that room either. Well, well there's certain I, things you can do to fix that. I mean, you could. You know, look at the HVAC system and it's got carpet in it. So you know, I personally don't think carpet's the greatest choice for schools. Um, but there's things you could do to alleviate that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not talking about putting main main classrooms in there, but and I, I don't even know. It's, you know, I'm just offering the space as whatever you want it to be, as opposed to tearing it down and not having that option. So I would say from a space standpoint, my, my sense from Jack and the middle school principal is they actually need that square footage, that, that their function, their middle school classrooms, there are uh, counselors, there are restrooms, there is intervention specialists, there's four things happening there. So uh, it's not like we could just make it go away. So the, what I was wrestling with is, okay, if you had to replace that, Let's say you said it's going to be non-educational use and you're just going to use it for storage and you need to replace it. Where would you replace it and what would that do to, to the flow and everything in the school? For example, this is a spot you could replace it. You could drive a corridor right through here and you could do a corridor in classrooms and then do, do an additional there. But as a, in a, a principal managing a building, do I want that much load? that much further away from me. Do I do it here where I already have um, Mike, I think he's saying core the addition where it is. Yeah, I'm not saying oh, what do I do? Is there room, you know, where you're putting the addition, which is in that court court. You're putting I'm court still court putting the addition in the courtyard. Yeah. Oh. Does that it's, not give you enough space? To make yes. it, uh, that's that was my main. Oh, okay. So I could you assume, could you do something like this? Yeah. Fill it in. Yes. I would really say awesome. theoretically that would be possible. My concern is, is I mean, as a as a design value, we never try to put make classrooms with no windows. I mean, you'd be in a situation where you've got all this, you've got this signature new high school. Math, ELA, students in there all day long with no exterior views. I'm not saying you could do it. I just don't think I would aspire to do that. Could it not come out at an L going to the left from the shoebox? I mean, if you look at the shoeboxes with the square footage that's there, I mean, if you were to rebuild that, you're talking a million five hundred thousand. Oh, quite well. Yeah, probably more. Yeah. So I mean, even if we spend three hundred thousand on really good heating, cooling, dehumidification, improving the crawl space, I mean, there's kids that sit in the passageway, the main passageway, studying that stuff. Couldn't we make little study rooms as well as um, storage areas, specialized offices? I'm just saying, like it's pretty well paid for space having the shoebox. It's it's already there. It's going to cost us I, money to get rid of it. Yeah, you I was could, going to say, you could do that. 
Yeah, I don't think we need to solve it. Let's you know, we throw out ideas, ask yeah. questions. Yeah. Like we're going to solve it. Either, either there or just take the very end of the shoebox off. So you're so from the old music room, you could come the whole way across into your ground coming out there, and now you're still in the same area. You've got your flow going through, and you've just gained a whole bunch of square footage. And so keep there for months to have to come and figure out how to fix. I just have a quick um, question relative to, because when we were looking at the buildings, there was clearly a lot of need for more storage. Now I know if you're a teacher, you don't necessarily want your storage a million miles away from where you're teaching. But, um, but I think our, the question is, is there gonna be adequate storage in the new plan, do you think? There's never enough storage in that plan, and, and uh, you probably, I could probably add more, and they would be happy. Uh, but but they are getting a six percent increase on square footage. Along with that, it's going to be a lot more storage. My job, yes, sir. If, is there a corresponding high school plan B if the sixth grade moves to the high school, or is no. that all going to fit in the yeah. check? Would you mind? Well, so so. Um, in this plan, so that the French classroom and the Kiva are two quote unquote flex spaces. So you saw those in the middle school plan. Those are not in the high school plan. So I think um, as we look at this move, um, it would really be, um, I think, part of the redesign of that second and third floor. There's room on the second and third mm -hmm. floor to do. So, so right now we have five grades. classrooms in the third floor, or the second floor, only four classrooms in the third floor. So there would be space in a, in a deep renovation to be able to fit the classrooms. Yeah, that, that, well, that's what I was guessing, but I think it wasn't spelled out. Yep. So in other words, if we don't move to sixth grade, we have a very generous middle school. I, I, I don't even know that that's fair to say because it's still the same square footage of where we are now, and I don't think that... Our but space is more safe. We're limiting where place. the classrooms are. Right. Okay, so I had a lot of small detail questions, and then I think it comes down to this: is what is Jack and Megan? What is your plan to run this by the teachers? Because I want to make sure that they look at it and they have time to think about it and see if that meets their um, meet their expectations and their needs there. So. Um, what would be, how would you collect or feedback from the staff on those plans? I would say just in general, a staff meeting or maybe even going into small groups such as their um, grade level team meetings and going over this plan and then asking for feedback and, and compiling all those suggestions or concerns and and then kind of going back to the drawing board. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually would imagine it probably having to be at a, a time when we have a lot of time mm -hmm. because this is something our teachers feel very passionate about right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think some have been vocal and many have been vocal internally and haven't necessarily been as vocal in the community, um, but they feel strongly about it. So I think they're going to want to have a lot of input. Um, just looking at our plan, I think it addresses a lot. But I still think the the systems piece and and yeah. um, it's going to be something that they're going to have a lot of questions about and it's going to be important to them um, in the day to day. Yeah, and, and my second question was to do the same process with students. I know that one of our requests from students was to have more gender neutral bathrooms, and I would want them to have the opportunity to weigh in on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerry, yeah, go ahead. Is it worth considering filling in the floor of the band room, pouring a slab on that, and make that all one level, and make that a usable thing? You could totally do that. Huh? You could totally do that. Yeah, foam, you would usually just stick foam in there, then pour a slab, and, and then you don't have. Yeah, you do that. Does the new music room on that corner, would that appear at all? Or? Oh, well, it would, it would mean that we wouldn't be doing it. You know, maybe you're know, not doing two new music rooms and even the band room. But that scenario would cut one off. So we would lose the storm shelter potentially there. And, and if you filled in the, the well, doesn't it eliminate some offices space, and storage well, space. Offices and, and space for students? Mm -hmm. Because right now they can be tiered. And so when you're, when you're all flat, you lose the ability. I mean, when you tier, you can have more students. And, it wouldn't necessarily have to be a music room. 
thought. It's just a thought. Hey, was, would that be a useful space? Would that be another kind of useful does, space? Does the building shell worth saving? You know, all those things need to be taken into consideration. Something after the bottom. I got one question here. Um, the, the new kitchen, you got the delivery doors there, and they're fairly close to the service. It's not great. Yeah. But I, oh, you can also deliver, you can deliver through here. It's a bit more remote. Um, but then when you're trying to keep the whole security thing there, yeah, it's like you got a lot yeah. going on at one location. You can try to have deliveries before yeah. or after school, <laughs> but that's kind of a drawback of trying yeah. to keep everything where it's at. In our current, can you deliver through the door that you have shown just in front of the new construction? Yes, but I think, yeah, what I think the concern is, is now you're adding a whole other delivery sequence, right? If you're to your vestibule, you got some box truck parked out there. Would it be worth to move one of the music rooms over there and then put the offices more in the center so that, so you don't have a delivery truck all the time? You could do that. Our delivery trucks come well before the start of the school day. Rarely do we have a delivery yeah. during the school day. Typically at okay. 5.30 to 7 o'clock a.m. The delivery trucks are normally out by 7. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's no problem. Yeah. I want to give people on the committee who haven't spoken yet if you might want to add yeah, something. Uh, any thoughts with the limitations on the gym? Taking some portion of that stage. I can't remember what how much more room you need when you make it regulation. Any thoughts that you, you know, need a couple you would need a, that way? You need to trim a couple feet at minimal. Uh, I believe it's a concrete stage. I'm not saying it's not doable, but it would be an expensive proposition for 24 inches. And it would just need to yeah, through one. from a cost benefit. Is that worth that? Well, it's just a deck. I mean, because there's storage underneath that. Oh, is it? Yeah. Is it a concrete so, front wall or? Yeah, it's, it's, it's block. block front wall oh. and it's a concrete pad. Well, so you have to build a new wall to support the. Yeah, you build something the back there, cut that off, and now you have your space. You can make it a yeah. regulation. You'd have to move the whole gym floor that right. way, as mm -hmm. opposed to tearing the end wall out. That you had. And then you um, ask you have to yes yourself if it's two foot nine today, and the goal is three foot. Is it worth <laughs> that? Yeah. For, yeah. Well, three, three, three inches. Is the right. Ten feet is the recommended. Yeah, yeah. The dip, there's a huge difference when you're coming at that wall going for a ball yeah. between three feet and ten feet. Yes. Well, you could add more because you could cut the whole front of that. It's just I think it comes down to the point where if you're going to use it as a stage, or you're going to use it as a, as a basketball court, because you probably can't have both. And I don't know optimally if that's ever been a good stage, or it, if it ever so would be. Right the other now, logistics is we have practice the same. We have right. athletic practices the same time that theater rehearsals will be taking place. Mm -hmm. So the idea of having them both in the same space in a middle school, high school setting is difficult. Most stages open into the cafeteria space or the dining space as opposed into the gymnasium. So we'd actually do that and then use to the dining. Yeah. Or they can rehearse in their new in large the, music. In the right. Music in the music, yeah. Yeah, yeah. music. It takes the pressure off the stage. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one thing that this plan oh, doesn't ahead. address that most schools, I, I would say a lot of schools have, would be a second gym. So, I mean, we are, that's another struggle we have in this community. When we have high school practices, high school games, middle school practices, middle school games, particularly in the winter season, we're using the ESC um, gymnasium, which is still the original tile floors, two backboards. You know, it's um, from, a, from a facility standpoint, it's, it's not ideal for our student athletes. Um, we're even having teams practicing at the Bryan Center um, in that original gym down there. So, um, you know, a, a dream would be to have a second gym. And, and um, I don't know, it, it's not a, a sticking point for me in this plan necessarily, but it would be an ideal that a lot of schools, even our size, have. Scott, I saw I, you I, over there. Um, and I don't know to what extent this may be. In any way segue to or from the stage issue but the the one thing that sort of stands out to me as missing in in the, the high school plan as discussed is uh, is the performance space and i have and i mean i i've heard so many people 
talk to me about how you know, as much as we value the arts, uh, performing arts, plays, and musical performances and so forth, we, we really don't seem to have much in the way of suitable spaces for those students to perform. Uh, this is a photo of, of the gym, and um, uh, as you'll see, there are, there's no acoustical wall treatment on the walls. Uh, rear wall echo, flutter echo, all that's happening. There's no lighting. You have no multi-level lighting control. Um, you, you don't have like a light bar that comes across you know, with some lighting. Uh, there's a lot you could do to make improvements to the space that you have that would make it much more functional as an auditorium space without, have, without having to build a dedicated auditorium. Um, and I, I don't mean to be trying to sell this, I'm just saying, kind of given the bigger picture. The other thing we've seen is when we do these really nice music rooms that sound really, really good and the band can finally hear themselves for the first time and ceiling diffusers and all this stuff that, that they end up having small recitals in their in their classrooms. So we see that all the time is, is that they'll do music choir recitals right in their rooms, get some chairs lined up, and you, you end up with kind of little quasi recital halls without having to, to go build one. Brian, did you like I think oh. a lot of this is really great. I mean I think there's a whole bunch has been kept. I think it's a great start to go there. I, I do agree with Jack. A lot of it now is going to, is like, how do you deal with the other problems that are around it to make the whole package come true? A question on the note one. It's sort of with the music room, art room double as a tornado room also. Is that you, your thought? Yeah, you okay. could potentially harden the box here. Uh, if you wish, and I, I didn't speak a lot on this. So it's, it's there's currently a moratorium. Districts are not required to do that, but that's supposed to lift this fall, and there's uncertainty about whether that will be extended. What what some districts are looking at. So, so the the requirements for a full on ICC 500 compliance storm shelter are numerous. <laughs> numerous. I mean, you have to have a, a mechanical systems that can withstand it. You've got to have uh, restrooms that support it, generator. that can withstand it. You've got to have a generator. The costs go on and on and on. So some of our clients will say, could we consider, and, and this is kind of the in-between option, could we consider hardening the box, designing stiffer walls, stiffer roof, better roof wall connections, better footer wall connections, um, maybe grounded solid, more rebar, and stiffen it and make it the absolute best place in a storm you would possibly want to be in the building, but not necessarily do the generator and the restrooms because the tornadic events are actually pretty fast. You know, and so restrooms make a ton of sense if you're in a hurricane zone where you're waiting something out for four or five hours, but but when a tornado blows through, it's generally a pretty quick uh, situation. So there's sometimes questions about, do we really need to go the full the full route and have an isolated restaurant. So, so that was the thought here is, is you could harden or do a storm shelter over the uh, hard music. You know, the challenges too are then you need, you need uh, storm shutters or yeah. you want windows. You want art rooms with windows, right? So it's the trade offs of now you've got to have shutters that come down and block it. And, so. Kinetic, right. did you want to say anything? I'm just trying to give people who haven't spoken on the committee a chance if they have anything they want to add or any thoughts. Yeah, so one of the very first things I think about is we talk about the exterior doors to our classrooms that are up there. And one of the major things is that with this, um, our students don't have to walk outside to go to the band anymore. Um, that's a major thing. So when they go out to band now, they walk outside. So that's another place where we have to open up our doors, they walk out, come back in through the doors. Um, thinking about having our classrooms um, open up like through there. Um, so when we have classes switching, because there are only two classes, there's two classes switching at the same time. So 
moving us out, especially the grades that do switch, moving us out to a, a bigger hallway would help um, so that kids are kind of passing instead of having to wait in one spot until one class gets out. So thinking about the movement is really nice. Um, yeah, I think that I really like this idea. I also like the idea of hardening those rooms so that we're not all bunched up in the hallway there for tornado home stuff. So it's a, it's a, a major improvement to me. Mike, with the, with the you were showing that the closing of a lot of doors, does that still give you the adequate fire escape processes? We would need to, to verify we have multiple means of egress. Okay, that's a safety and security thing too. Um, the only thing we would need to do a, a bit of a code review on is this addition has exterior doors out of all of the classrooms. So the problem is if, if you don't have those, then you've got folks exiting through a space to get to another space. And so we just need to do the code analysis to see how many of these could possibly be removed. I guess Why are the doors a problem? So it's a penetration point. So are the windows. It is. Just as much as the doors are. Yeah, but um, generally speaking, a door is a feels like a more vulnerable penetration point than a So it's psychological. Yeah. It's easier to get through a door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the, uh, no, it is a lot. A lot of doors are not for you. For most people. The uh, Ohio facilities uh, report in 2018 take a new construction cost for Southwest Ohio at $253 a square foot. What would be your guess in this current climate? Uh, what new construction might cost from a square foot that is? Total all in project cost for this, which might be something which would be on the ballot, and I'm making this up November 23. So, if you look at a dividend in 2024, if I were advising you today, I would say $450 a square foot. What about uh, that's for new construction or for the total package? For, for new for the additions. Okay, what yeah. about the deep renovation? Uh, deep renovations could be. Um, you put me on the spot, but you could easily spend up to three hundred dollars a square foot, all in project costs on the deep renovations. Up to the, the benefit of, of these plans compared to a new school is these because new construction costs so much. These minimize new construction compared to even the twenty eighteen plan where we replaced the entire tower. So you have a lot less new construction here, which helps. Um, one other thing I'll just mention is is the kind of the, the optics behind this particular edition, you know, a nice art music edition. And we could have decided to put the teacher worker out there or, or something else, but just the optics of a really nice art and music room as an addition might be an opportunity to include some donors or folks who are interested in a project like that. So kind of on, on one hand, you have a Arts and Music Specials Edition supporting your elementary, and then on the other hand, you have essentially a new high school for the high school kids. Well, I was thinking the same thing about the performance, right? So the community is missing a, a, a nice performance center. It doesn't have to be funded by the school district, right? It could be the community. Um, I guess that would solve some of the you know, performance questions. Um, but I don't, I don't know if we always, because I think some of the original plans had that as part of this, right? The performance, uh, not these plans, but plans. There was, there was a, a vision once upon a time to have a, a like a black box theater. Okay. That could easily be added to this as a future vision. Uh, that would be right adjacent to your rehearsal spaces. And there, were, there was some interest in that. Uh, there was also a plan at one time to add on to the front of the lawns stage for crop storage and different things. Because uh, I worked on that shortly after I retired, um, they were was, was trying to get together an enlargement so that they could have full theatrical space there. Um, but I don't know where we're happening. Other any other 
folks from outside the table. What about us? Right hand? Uh, I've asked him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had a question about outdoor spaces. That's been addressed a little bit of built one for the fence from the, uh, the playground, um, the sidewalk that's being put in. What about the, the high school, the, uh, the parking situation, the very poor drainage, uh, the very dreary, frankly dreary looking exterior? Uh, could that be painted or brightened somehow? So this is just a little, so we're, we're kind of the master planning phase, but just a little note or a gesture that says the entire drop off, there would be site work required to redo all that because the whole drop off would have to move out front. Uh, and then in terms of your, your, your vision of the school, you would have a new addition, you'd have the ability to do a nice entry feature, I don't know if it's a canopy and bike parking, and then depending on how far you want to go with the tower, the tower could be reskinned. A new, a new skin applied to that tower okay. um, that could essentially give you a whole kind of new what will feel like a whole, a whole new visual and look different and my and my final question about outdoor space at the high school is especially if you eliminate the courtyard i agree with you the courtyard doesn't look like much but i know my grandchildren go there and um the, the front area that's kind of garden like is completely exposed so I'd like to know where high school students could be outdoors for lunchtime or some of their classes. So we, when we had just quickly conceptualized it with Jack was an opportunity to do something right here, uh, which could be, you know, kind of the heart of the, of the campus. All the classrooms could get to it. You could get to it from the student dining room and out. You could eat lunch up there. It could be secured. It could be an outdoor classroom. Um, and it, and you know, you probably could argue that as an experience, it might <laughs> <laughs> it might feel a little better than that because you're look, you know, you'd be looking at the trees and the lawn versus just a blank wall. So replacing this outdoor space with a with a prettier, secure. Yeah. That sounds great. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Say your name again when you speak. Okay, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to, uh, to say it's, it's nice to hear things um, on this scale being proposed um, after watching the two, the last two processes unfold. I, I, I wasn't sure what would come out of this next process. So it's encouraging for me to see um, substantial uh, things being proposed. That's it, it just uh, lifts my mood a bit. Um, yeah, so did you have a question? Which is nope. good optimism. That was it. <laughs> um, yeah, I like the kind of out of the box thinking. I guess my question is about where students go while this work is being done. How long would it take? How much? Where would they go? There's the costs associated with that, both in learning and in Yes. So I do not have the, I mean, that would be a, 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 a full team, uh, full hands on deck. Um, scenario but for like off the top of my head this addition could easily be built while students are occupying the building is separate uh, from the school um, I believe Jack if you handcuffed him and put a gun to his head could probably say he could do without that with for a period so of time. part of our, this team we did a space utilization study and, and we could build potentially a master schedule to free up enough spaces to where teachers could travel it, for a year or two. It's not something that would be ideal, but for a year or two, if we would need to, we could um, make that work. Travel to other classrooms. Yes, yeah, so like when a teacher <laughs> has a plan period, there's the, um, whatever teacher's on a plan period, a different teacher would use their classroom during that plan period to teach that class. Mm -hmm. so, is there, is there class, going to be a lot of A summer, a whole year, yeah. summer. And, and Mike was saying, we are, usually our strategy is that two summer, and then a, a year bridge, so like a 15 month schedule, for example, like the kitchen. You can't not have a kitchen, so we would hit the kitchen either summer number one or summer number two. Same thing with central plant, because you can't switch over utilities. So you target certain renovations in the summers, and then through the academic year, you can do your construction, they can do that, the contractor can do that uh, from the outside. And then just also, this is going to depend on the budget. You know, maybe you do, and I'm just making this up, maybe you hit the first floor as a first phase. 
and then you don't have to renovate all three floors of that at once. You could do it over a series of phases. Or as you pointed out, you're adding a certain amount of space, so the, the part in the front of the high could school be could be space. done without impacting the operation of the high school yeah. at all. And then that space could be used for something other than its intended use while you know the next phase goes on. So there, I, th I think this, this concept um, gives that flexibility. Yeah. I see a hand. Yeah. Um, so your name again? Katie Main. Um, I just had a quick question about Mills Law, and I noticed that there is a single point of entry, which I think is great for safety, but it's already a logistical nightmare sometimes to drop kids off, and I don't see anything that shows anything about um, where a parent would be able to drop their kids off safely. I don't think that was considered. Well, I mean, that, okay, that really yeah. wasn't. I mean. The answer yeah. to your question is yes, it's a nightmare. That really wasn't part of the, the discussion. Um, so I think once, what's the nightmare? I, I guess well, I'd like just, to There's just not students. a lot of space for all everybody coming into one yeah. door. I mean, we yeah. don't have like a circle drive that parents can come in and, and you know, which is part of this issue, but part of a larger just location issue, yeah. honestly. Um, so yeah. There's also the issue, I mean, the parking and not having a drop off is a huge safety issue. I've seen kids yes. get, it's really actually quite scary. Um, but also, since there's such a pinch point at that front door, they get dropped off in usually three locations. So if you have kids in all going in all three doors, the 10 minutes, I mean, it's virtually impossible to yes. drop a kid off here who's in sixth grade and then go all the way around and drop off your kindergartner. I mean, there's just not enough. Like, so you have drawings for a drop off a couple of years ago or out here? I think it might have. You did. There was all sorts of lanes that yeah, I was I all configured. I mean, we've talked about, I, I will say, we've talked to the village about drop off. Mm -hmm. And I've been getting very mixed messages because over the years I've heard people say there's problems with drop off. But, um, and the village is willing to help us try to solve that by any variety of ways that might make sense. Um, you know, not letting through traffic happen during drop off time. It's a short period of time, you know, any number of things. So I think, I think we maybe need to, and I know we've made some changes and I don't know if that's right. helped. So, Has so we helped? have, and I just want to remind everybody when I first came, we did do something. We did one way. Yeah. Like, and nobody but, around here liked it and I thought it was wonderful. They were like, well, it was so the biggest problem. The parents loved it. The residents did. I mean, I'm just, just going to lay it out like the residents didn't love it. Yeah, it was 24 hours a day, and it only needed to be there for less than an hour or yeah. an hour the twice a day. So is, that was the biggest problem. One way, it's hard to do it for less than an hour. Yeah. So yeah, and that's I, I yeah. I mean, I think we can look at some of that. Again, I, think. I want to go back to it. The just pinch doesn't point need to be the 24 hours a day thing, and I think people would be okay with it. So the, the pinch point for entry, I, I yeah. get that. Everyone has to understand that that safety guidance and, and we've been meeting a lot with law enforcement is honestly one so it's really how do we make it if this is the one how do we make it so that there's no log jam but it's much safer if there's one point of entry so um these are these are good points i think that this one is more understandable and maybe addressable than, than the drop off <laughs> Will there be one point of entry at the high school? Did you, Sylvia? Yeah. I'm just trying to understand this. Yeah. Piece. Yeah. That's, that's, really that's going to be very different than it is now, isn't it? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm trying to track with this mostly because my kids haven't been in elementary school in a while, but I've been trying to go to the same. And remembering the three different, you know, like five, six enter school here, three, four enters here, and take two, two enters here. That won't work anymore if you're trying to securely monitor where everyone's community. You can't set that up for three places in the elementary schools, but I think I'm hearing, and that totally makes sense. Again, okay, I want to make sure I was corrected on that. So then you have them all again back at the one door. So that I, I get it. And the only other thing I would say is um, as a parent who's who, who had one child who spent the entirety of the six years of their middle and high school life in the shoebox because of the kind of classroom they were in. That is a, that is a, it's a thing I, I guess I won't say, I'll just say nightmare. 
that's a nightmarish place. So be really careful about trying to save that for any purpose. <laughs> David, David, is it? Yeah, I guess it's confusing. Um, and to that point, I feel the same way. I've had so many people that thought you could taste that in the little office adjacent to it. Um, my booster is in that shoe box. It's not comfortable for me. And my dad had two boys go through it. Frustrated to even hear it talk about being kept because I think we had a good tornado that was the first thing going. Uh, it's not secure. It doesn't feel straight walk around it. And there's a cost to that, keeping that too as well, because it, again, it's going to be cheaper than rebuilding that new area in that courtyard. But there's still a cost of keeping the shoe box that needs to be factored in too. So it's not paid for. It, you're going to have to get the HVAC going. You're going to have to secure it more. You're going to have to, a lot of factors are going to go into it if it's going to be anything else but storing mops. That's a lot of space to store mops. I think the the experts we, when we were looking at the building, um, I mean there were some misconceptions about the school uh, the, the shoebox I believe, but uh, the biggest reason we started thinking about it there's some use for it is because we just saw so much storage being in places it could be used it could be classroom you know that were like part of the new part of the building for example, and and people seem to be struggling so much to find places to put things, so you know and. Uh, you know, there's a cost of taking it down. There's, you know, so it's just uh, if there is a use, just to keep it in mind that there might be something it could be used for. But, but it has a moisture pro It definitely has major problems that have not been addressed in years, in terms of uh, that, that make it an, un an unhealthy space as current. Can I just clarify my point of entry? There's actually two, and it's on the drawings. The buses. The buses um, drop off in the back here, and then kind of right now, kind of near the, the out of the parking lot near the bank. Yeah, yeah. Gary. No. I just wanted to mention on the on the, the whole question with the you know drop off, and you mentioned the you know, the one way experiment on right. on, um, on uh, Walnut. Yeah. That that was in conjunction with I think two other. Changes. There was a, a change also implemented on Short Street, Street and yeah. change implemented at the intersection of Walnut and Limestone. And my recollection is people were more upset with the other two changes and not as much the one way on Walnut. And that's always the problem you have when you, you experiment with multiple things to try to sort out what works and what didn't. So, you know, so, so that might. People might not be upset with that if it's a standalone. Just wonder if we did have that. Okay. Is your new Our, is your new scheme working pretty well? Uh, it, it, is, it is. It is. Yes. But the perfect honesty here. If we could get more cooperation with parents, please do not stop your car in the middle of the street and get out and take your kid to the front door. That causes <laughs> complete problems. <laughs> we will make sure they get inside safely. So, but it is, thank you, Michael. It, it's actually gorgeous. Don't you think? It is. And I'll just add, do not drop your student off on the traffic side either. Um, it's very dangerous. So just make sure it's the sidewalk side. But I think it's going quicker, and I have not heard any complaints oh, with the exception of one, and that was a drop off with um, kindergarten. And I think that parent just did not realize that she could go on um, Elm and drop off that way. So I could. Yeah, I could. Yeah. I will say I'm thrilled to see the safety controllers. Oh, and the safety controllers are back, yes. <laughs> yes. So thanks for bringing that. Yes. So there's three points of entrance. Is that correct? Right now? There right, right now. There's four. We, yes. Third, fourth, fifth. Um, first, third. First, second, third, sometimes third, fourth, fifth, depending on sibling clusters. Um, and then kindergarten um, are going straight to the door, and there are teachers at the door. So families can bring the kindergartner up to the door and hand that student off straight to a teacher. And then the buses come in earlier. But I do have a related question for uh, Mike Rushley on this plan here. I'm looking at how do we access the playground because I think we close that entrance here. 
uh, on on my option A, I showed the doors. I think I may have left them off accidentally on option B. So. Gotcha. I just want to make sure that they still have an access. Yeah. The, because you wrote it as a storage room, and I was like, oh, is that no yeah, longer? Yeah, I'll clean that up. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of thinking maybe we should try to move on. It's on it's 8:30 uh, or 8:40 almost, um, and I'm just trying to figure out. I think maybe the best thing. I think we're just going to hold any discussion. If there were several issues that um, Michael Murdoch is 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 preparing for us, but I think rather than going into that, it's all right with you. Um, why don't we go to a couple of items? Um, well, in terms of, we have talked about visiting a couple of schools, the committee. Um, a newish school, fairly new school, I'm not sure if it's brand new or five years old. Some people wanted to see, you know, how a, a, a new building is wearing, I guess is the word. And then also to see a school that's an older school that's been at deep renovation in the way that we are considering. So we could, so the, so we have talked about that, and I know you guys have been thinking about a couple of possibilities. Were you? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So um, Forest Hills um, School District, uh, we did nine renovation additions. Uh, one Where new building in uh, Cincinnati. 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 Uh, Anderson, Cincinnati. Anderson, Sorry. Anderson Township. Okay. Okay. Um, so. They were all. Uh, so it's a mix of. There were of older K buildings brought up. K five to K threes or, sorry, there was a. a Is it a mix of sort of older new, buildings that have been one brand new full school and, and one, then the rest of them were, uh, additions and renovations. Okay. And it was done in 2017, 2016, 2018, over three years with you all. Okay. Um, so there are new entrances, uh, but the majority of it was renovation. Okay. It was deep renovation, you know, tearing out the slabs, putting in new plumbing, new bathrooms. Okay. Um, Were there, did you have any? Uh, I, I liked his. I, that sounds like a great idea. It's a little far to drive. Yeah. yeah. Like the reason so why is those fine. were the same mm -hmm. vintage buildings, right? Yes. Yeah. And Absolutely. I think that's a, a particular point is seeing buildings of that vintage and how they were redone right. with additions on them it's a pretty particular yeah. similar situation construction similar exteriors uh, very okay. one floor single floor in most cases maybe a tall section for a gym but a lot of the same problem okay. we just finished a new k-12 uh, open two weeks ago but i you know i hate to take you through a brand new k-12 you know what i mean Unless the committee wants to see a new building just by comparison, because it really is radically different. I would, I would like to see that. Yeah. And where is that? Uh, that, um, that one's in Springfield. Springfield. Um, but there's others. There's lots of new buildings around here. Um, so, Michael, are you able to organize the Forest Hills? We were sure. talking about maybe, you know, mid afternoon before. Is out. I don't know how to check out. So I don't know if you want to school in or to not. To sort of see it in in session, and then but to have time to also be there after session, so we're not interrupting them. Is I'm that? Sure, they would be. Do you think they would, would you take us there? Would we? How would we do that? Who would lead us? Would there? Be there. Um, so we we we'd probably have to settle on this. Of one or two schools. Can you give me some building names? I'm familiar with courses. What schools are you talking about? All of them, but uh, the like, it could be Sherwood, it could be uh, Nagel. Right. Be, Sherwood and Nagel honestly would be two, two good options. Yeah, they're and, close. And I think Nagel was important. And so that's their middle school. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, how we do this thing of trying to see if people are available. Um, Leslie, you can help us maybe with that in terms of getting a couple of elementary right across the perfect. Which would be a high school, elementary school, which is kind of where you're at at yeah. middle school, but they're very close. Have you done renovations at Turpin? Yeah. Okay. Have you done renovations that at Turpin and Anderson? That's a good team. Yeah. Are we doing this all in one trip? 
And what about our principals and teachers that will be teaching and principal? And <laughs> well, um, they all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's, that's something yeah, we need to figure out. We don't have to figure it out tonight. <laughs> October 8th. Field trip. October 14th. Uh, 14th. On the day where they have no school oh. Yes. But there will be there. Yeah, we I have, have no idea. We have professional development day. Okay. Okay. We're banking on the fact that it won't coincide with theirs. Right. Yeah. <laughs> October, if it's a Friday, October 14th, actually, that would be a really good day because um, these folks wouldn't feel pressured to, to have to choose. Uh -huh. And we could take, you know, you know I, I, guess, I can only speak for the educators. We could take the whole day and, and just make the trip down there okay. worthwhile. Okay. All right, so we'll try to, Leslie's going to help us try to coordinate this, I guess. Is that okay, Leslie? Yeah. I think really the, the piece, we can do that. I think the key is for us to, I think once, if they can't accommodate us, then I think the key is really yes. what states can they accommodate us? Yes. And then we're going to have to make our schedule fit around that. But I would, I would propose. I'd be surprised if they wouldn't accommodate you. October 14th. Okay. I'll call them tomorrow. Okay. And then um, I wanted to talk about the date of the next uh, meeting uh, because a couple of people told me they're not available, and so I wanted to, from the committee. I wondered if we, if there was the possibility of moving the date. Um, Can I, so it's October sixth, and uh, I was wondering if we could maybe move it to the following Monday if that's a possibility. And, and that's that's in tied with the timeline of months work too. So we need right. To, right. That's why I wanted to bring it up tonight to see who can come and who can't come because uh, I how know many people are not there? Be there for the October eight, the October six meeting. How many people are we trying to accommodate here? Everybody else, how is everybody? Everyone, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. No. Given that it promotes, it's going to be talking about systems, it just seemed like it might be important. Super exciting stuff. Well, to some of us. We're excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Would the following Monday possibly work for people? In October? October, yeah. So the following Monday would be something like that. Thank you. The what is it, the That's Columbus Day. Would that work? After the 10th? Okay. We'll do the 10th. Oh, you guys are good. Okay. It's up this that is a good Okay. October 10th. That's when you'll be doing your presentation. Is now a good segue to talk about the uh, schedule for those timeline? Uh, sure. So uh, in the packet that we included today, uh, we we included the uh, timeline that was discussed in July and then revised then. And I wanted to make sure that we were uh, we knew what to expect on October 10th here. So do you think that by then most will be able to give a final report as if it was scheduled on September 16th? Mm -hmm. So that would include the database. Is that what you said? The database, yeah. Okay. And, and then a narrative with recommendations. Narrative with recommendations. And in the database, we would have the uh, cost estimates for budget for repairing, maintaining, or replacing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we are talking about maybe having this available early so that we yes. have time to chew on it. It would be good to have any input. I'd rather have the arrows early. Okay. So when do you think you would be able to what, submit it? Yeah. How early would you want? End of September is the goal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
the 10th, Jack just pointed out, we would have this, the state of the schools is on Wednesday, and board meetings on Thursday. It's going to be a heavy week, especially for us. And that's the Friday you want to go to Forest Hill? Yeah, that, that's a rough week. Oh, maybe we should. No, we're talking about the 10th for this meeting. Yeah, yeah. 10th is yeah. Monday for this meeting. 11. Wednesday is State of the Schools. Thursday is the board meeting. Friday. Now we're talking about this. And, yeah. and I, not that it's about my schedule, I actually have to speak at a conference on the 14th, but I don't, I feel confident that you can go see Bill. I see <laughs> many buildings. So um, it really would just be the 10th. If we could maybe put that another time that would give a give a little break that week. So what if we push it uh, to October fifth instead of October sixth? Would that arrange those folks? Because we we want this to happen before the school board meetings. October fifth on the Wednesday. This works. When are you guys? I don't know what that. I can do Actually, that week I'm fairly well shot. Yeah, you are too. Lucky. He's got me away. So, is that one of those things that we need to consider doubling it up with a board meeting and it happens at the same no, time? No. I'm no, thinking, no. It's just, this is a, I appreciate that, but this is really hard for my people. Yeah. I mean, do it to me because I get paid for it. It's just really hard. I mean, this week is then every day, starting with Sunday. Um, what about the Monday the 26th? Is that too? Are, are you guys here then? Perfect. Uh, can, I, can I just say something? We're dealing with a very large group of people with many different I know, schedules. It's just, no, I know. It's you're just not that gonna get yeah. you're not going to get everyone. I mean, you're you're talking about work meetings. You're talking about you know child care days, and I think just leaving it at the set meeting dates, and we okay. just have to agree that we will be missing some people because yes. it would be way too hard to figure out and then who's more important than who if he can miss this date and i would miss this date i just think it makes more sense to keep them on the schedule dates that everybody has on their calendars instead of trying to figure out when everyone is available i think that's just the fair way to do it i, I don't know if anybody else agrees well, but i, I, I don't that. disagree with you at all i just it, the, you know we We've got the building experts, and he's going to be talking about building systems. And so, having three of them missing seemed like significant to me. But if we have but, it ahead of time, but maybe if we have the, maybe we could meet. Maybe we could. Meet with those guys. Yeah. Like like that. Earlier or the week yeah. before. Or? That is, I don't, I don't know if that is working no. for me. I think that this is where we could go split roads and kind of lose the process here. But I'm, I'm wondering if have access to the database early on is there any way that you would be able to provide something in writing so that it would be considered during the meeting at the set time and set day when are you going to have your piece ready i'm good shooting for the end of september can you give us a date uh so you <laughs> said, <laughs> that's a good one week of the 24th or the 27th okay would that give you enough time September, to, to look at it? And, and I'll give it a try. Okay. okay. You're going to be gone too. Yeah, yeah but I can make that work. Okay. All right. All right. So October 6th stands? Yep, so we're back to October 6th. 10th is So, yeah, we'll try to make sure we get that in. Yeah. If we have the issue. information, well in advance of the meeting, then we can confer among ourselves and and have the people that are, can attend the meeting represent the people that that aren't there. It's okay. only when we get a package a day before the meeting that it's we have to be at the meeting. <laughs> okay. Yep. Good point. All right. Uh, the next meeting, 
uh, October 6th, thinking about the agenda. Um, so uh, Michael Murdoch from Moats is going to be presenting a, an extensive report on the condition of systems in the building and the building number of itself, um, uh, yeah, as well as the database. Um, he has also um, brought to the attention of uh, committee members that, just for the larger public, the possible that he thinks we should explore what are called ESCOs, which are energy saving companies. Well, it's an energy, ESCO is an energy service company, but uh, the idea of an energy project is a, something I think we should consider. Yeah. And it's a way to replace the significantly aged equipment you have. Um, based on uh, energy savings and maintenance savings. And it's done in the state. It's a program the state manages as well as individual school districts do it. I've seen it done successfully about a dozen times. And um, they replaced mechanical equipment, boilers, chillers, rooftop units. They've even gotten some upgrades. There's been a space that was an added addition uh, based on the amount of money they were saving. Um, so it's, it's a, a way to, you know, you're already spending significant money in, in energy and in maintenance on old equipment. So they make a calculation. They come in, evaluate the buildings, and you, you can put them into competition. So you, you, you put it out, uh, you get five or six companies to come in, they review it, they create a list of things they can do. The fact that you don't have LED lighting is a huge opportunity that will save a significant amount of money. The fact that you have these old boilers, huge opportunity that will save a significant amount of money. And they'll use that savings to pay, it, off, pay it off. And it's, you know, a 20, 25 year payback. So if you're going to tear the buildings down in five years, don't do this because you're going to own the loan still. Uh, but if you're going to, you know, it's going to be a deep renovation, it may be an opportunity for you to uh, get three or three million dollars, two and a half million dollars worth of MEP stuff done, um, in addition to your bond levy for the, the architectural structural, mechanical electrical plumbing. We we've done one of those. You can what one of those energy, energy studies. Study, yeah, where they um, they came in and they uh, audited yeah billing, and then they gave us certain improvements, uh, lighting and different things. And, yeah. Was paid for, so I don't know if that paperwork is still laying around. But there, there's We've some done work, didn't and you? And yes. Made some improvements. In it. Yes. So it is a way you can right. get some immediate help on some of your systems. Could you uh, could you give us like a uh, a little bit more of a presentation on this? Yeah, some examples we could look at. I was recommending um, yeah. that there's a, a gentleman that used to work for the OCC that. Has done this a number of schools um, like Mendenhall, and he's kind of an expert at it. And I thought he might be someone that would talk to you if, if, it, if it's in a school board meeting or a facilities board meeting or whatever that could explain it and explain how the, the, the how it works with the state and how the state can raise the money, can loan you the money, or you can do your own your own method of borrowing the money. But the, it works pretty good. Where, where does where is he out of? Um, he's out of Chillicothe. He works all over the state. He's a okay. owner's rep for schools okay. um, now. So just a thought. Yeah. Have you anything that's to have you talk? And, a good thought. And okay. Have you done any of that? Have you ever seen uh, okay. At this? Okay. So um, I'm not sure when we'll come back to drawings and more input. Um, well, next week you're coming to present yeah. it to the board. Right. See where it goes. Okay. Who makes us for people watching online or who will watch it later? Where, who should they send questions or comments to? They have, what's the best email? Who do they send? Can we use the communication? Yes, we can do communications at yschools.org and we'll be able to tell what it is. And communications with the S facilities. S communications with an S. Communications at yschools.org. And then I can create the same type of running commentary. Green will do it that we did with safety. 
Okay, Sarah, I think I think we've done a lot tonight and maybe time to go home. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.